Hello friends, I am back with the second lecture of the atomic series structure. In the previous lecture, that is part one, I discussed the history of the development of atom. I discussed the cathode ray experiment, which led to the discovery of the subatomic particle electron. Then I discussed the cathode ray experiment using perforated cathode, which led to the discovery of proton. Then also I talked to you that it was late in 1932, James Chadwick disco discovered neutron, not in the cathode rate experiment, but by bombarding beryllium with alpha rays. Now we already, I think you know what are alpha ray, beta ray and gamma ray, that radioactive elements like uranium, they emit some penetrating radiations, uh, which uh, are called alpha ray, beta ray, and gamma ray. The alpha ray, they carry positive charge. Gamma ray, they are neutral. And uh, beta ray, they carry negative charge. So James Chadwick in 1932, he discovered neutron. He bombarded beryllium, beryllium with alpha ray and found that some penetrating radiation containing neutral particles were obtained and these particles were called neutron and their mass was nearly equal to that of proton. So we proceed to the second part of the lecture. This is the second part of the lecture, atomic structure, part two. So in this lecture, I'll be discussing Dalton's atomic theory, then Rutherford's scattering experiment and discovery of nucleus and Planck's quantum theory. So just a recap of our memory, so in the part one of this lecture, I discussed the discovery of the subatomic particles, electron, proton, and neutron. So electron, they carried a mass of around 9.108 into 10 to the power of minus 28 gram. Protons are much heavier compared to electron. They carry a mass of 1.672 into 10 to the power of minus 24 gram. And neutron, slightly heavier than proton. So their mass is around 1.674 into 10 to the power of minus 24 gram. The electron and proton, they carry same amount of charge, but electron carry negative charge and proton carry positive charge. And their magnitude is 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 Coulomb, which is called one unit of negative charge. And the charge carried by proton is plus 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19. This plus, it does not mean the magnitude, it means positive charge. Here also minus does not mean magnitude, it means negative charge. And the charge carried by one proton is also called one unit of positive charge. And neutron, they are electrically neutral, so they does not carry any charge. And the mass of the proton, is almost equal to the mass of neutron, and it is around 1840 times heavier than the mass of electron. So after the discovery of electron and proton, so neutron was discovered late in 1932. So electron and proton were basically discovered around 1900. So people wanted to know how electron and protons make up atom. Because already in the previous class, I discussed that atoms are regarded as smallest indivisible particle of matter. And later on, by cathode ray experiment, they discovered that atom is made up of electron and proton. So this electron and proton, they are called the subatomic particle. So till now, I think it is clear to you all. So now I will proceed from this stage. So at this hour, electron and proton is discovered. So they already have seen, uh, shown you the 
values of neutrons mass and charge but today uh, my lecture will be around 1900 um, bc and in 1900 neutron was not discovered and already i told you neutron was discovered in 1932 so at that um, time 1901-1902 people believed that people knew that atom is made up of electron and proton and they wanted to know how this electron and proton are present inside atom so the first man to write a theory upon this was john uh, yours thompson and he proposed a model of atom and according to him like dalton postulated atom has spherical shape and thompson proposed that within the spherical atom there is a super positive charge in which the negatively charged electrons are suspended so this model is also called the plum pudding model because you already know pudding and the plums are suspended inside the pudding so similar to the plum pudding thompson proposed that the structure of atom is like plum and pudding where the pudding represent the super positive charge these are the positive charges and in the positive charges the negatively charged electrons are suspended so this model is called the thomson model of atom but late in 1910 arnes rutherford and i would like to tell you that arnes rutherford was the student of thomson he was a student of thomson and he carried the famous we uh, call it as the scattering experiment in the scattering experiment what he did he fired alpha particles and what are alpha particles actually alpha particles are a constituent of alpha rays and these alpha particles are double positively charged helium ion so the alpha particles carried two unit of positive charges and they has a mass equal to that of helium nucleus so we can say that alpha particles are double positively charged helium ion and we can represent it symbol symbolically as he plus 2 so arnes rutherford he fired alpha particles into a piece of gold foil and the thickness of gold foil is around 10 to the power of minus 7 meter so it was very very thin and you can assume that the gold foil contains a layer of gold atoms it was a layer of gold atoms not one maybe few of them because the uh, uh, diameter of atom is around 10 to the power of minus 9 meter and here the gold foil had a thickness of around 10 to the power of minus 7 meter which means the gold, gold foil contains few layers of gold atom so this is the experimental setup this is the gold foil its thickness is around 10 to the power of minus 7 meter and it seemed to be a few layers of gold atoms and this gold foil was surrounded by a semicircular detector and this semicircular detector comprises of a zinc sulfide screen so the inner part of the semicircular detector it is coated with zinc sulfide so when alpha particles which contain two unit of positive charge strikes zinc sulfide then it will produce flash like electric spark and the flash will tell you at what position the alpha particles have 
strike the detector. So this is the gold foil and it is surrounded by a semicircular detector which is polished by zinc sulfide and the zinc sulfide will produce flash when it is hit by alpha particle and this detector can be moved around 360 degrees so it is semicircular so by revolving the detector we can find out the fate of the gold alpha particles after striking the gold foil then this alpha rays were obtained from radium so the source of alpha particle was radium and it was kept inside a very thick lead block because these radiations are injurious to health so you don't want that this radiation get leaked and human being get exposed so the alpha particles they were produced from radium and this alpha rays were passed through some slit so that we get a fine beam and that fine beam of alpha rays targeted this gold foil and thompson wanted to know sorry rutherford wanted to know what happens to the alpha rays after passing through the gold foil now if we go to the thompson model so by the thompson model what you see there's a super positive charge and the negatively charged electrons are suspended in the positive charge so there are a lot of open spaces inside the atom so rutherford expected that all alpha ray would pass without any deflection but what did rutherford observe rutherford observed yes most of the alpha ray passed through the gold foil without any deflection that means it traveled along its same straight path here i am showing you this is the path of the alpha ray and this is the point of impact and most of the alpha ray pass through without any deflection but at the same time he also observed that few alpha rays and he estimated one in 10000 particle one alpha ray in 10000 particle got deflected at various angles so these are the alpha rays which got deflected this was the original path and these are the alpha ray which got deflected and they deflected at wide range of angle with respect to the original path and rutherford also observed that some alpha rays got deflected at 180 degree and travel back along its original path so this was the experiment the experiment is known as rutherford scattering experiment because he scattered alpha rays by striking a gold foil the gold foil has a thickness of around 10 to the power of minus 7 meter and this gold foil was struck by alpha rays from radium source and the observation was most of the alpha rays pass through without any deflection and few alpha rays estimated one in 10,000 got deflected and some of them got deflected at 180 degree that means it struck the gold foil and it got deflected at 180 degree means it traveled back along its original path so rutherford conducted this scattering experiment and he noted down the observation so this is what i was talking about rutherford and his co-workers studied alpha particle scattering from a thin metal foil the particle struck the detecting screen produces a flash of visible light. The alpha measurement of the angle between the flashes. So each flash represents a strike by alpha particle upon the detector. So measurement of the angle between the flashes. 
the metal foil and the source of alpha particles showed that the particles were scattered in all direction, including straight back toward the source. That means the alpha particles were uh, deflected at 180 degree and it traveled back along its original path. So this was the Thomson model. These are the positive charges, and the electrons are distributed in the positive charges. So if we go by Thomson model, then all the alpha rays should have passed through without any deflection or very small amount of deflection because electrons are much lighter particle compared to the alpha particle. But actually what they observe, they observe that not all the alpha particle pass through. Some alpha particle got deflected. That means the alpha particle which carried positive charge must have collided with some positively charged body. Now, if we go by the protons, the mass of proton is much less than the mass of the alpha particle. So if you consider the alpha particle to be a cricket ball, then you may consider the proton to be a table tennis ball. So if a moving cricket ball hits a static tennis, table tennis ball, then what do you expect? You expect that a tennis ball will be thrown away and the cricket ball will move in its original path. That means when a heavy, body, heavy moving particle strikes a lighter particle, then the lighter particle will get displaced and the heavy particle will move along its original path. But to the astonishment of Rutherford, he found that alpha particles, which are so heavy, their mass is around the mass of an helium atom, and they carry positive charges, two units of positive charges, and they got deflected. That means it must have collided some positively charged body, and that positively charged body cannot be proton, because proton mass is much lesser, proton is much lighter than a alpha particle. So if alpha particle strikes a light weight proton, then the proton would got deflected, not the alpha particle. So this led Rutherford to think, and he came to the conclusion that inside the atom, there must be a heavy positively charged body, which is called the nucleus. So the word nucleus, it came from Rutherford's experiment. So to explain the observation of Rutherford's scattering experiment, that is some alpha rays got deflected. They even got deflected at 180 degree and turned back along their original path, which indicates that inside the atom, there must be a heavy positively charged body, which Rutherford called it as nucleus. So Thomson model did not have this part, but based upon the observations, the results of Rutherford scattering experiment made Rutherford believe that atom consists of a heavy positively charged body called nucleus. And it is in the nucleus, the whole mass of the atom is suspended. That is why the fast moving heavy alpha particle, after striking the nucleus, they got deflected. So if we incorporate nucleus into the picture of atom, along with electron and proton, we can somehow explain Rutherford's scattering experiment. So if this is the model of atom, that is the model contains a positively charged nucleus at the center, electrons are distributed around the nucleus, they're moving around the nucleus, 
then the alpha particles <coughs> after striking the nucleus so the nucleus is having positive charge and the alpha particles are also having positive charge so the alpha particle will get scattered and because the mass of the nucleus is considered to be heavy because rutherford assumed that whole mass of the atom is concentrated in the nucleus so the alpha particle after striking the nucleus get deflected and nucleus remain in its original position and moreover so arnes rather for determine that there is a positively charged nucleus associated with the atom that was surrounded by electron and since only few alpha particle got deflected that means compared to the volume of atom the volume of nucleus is very small and rather for estimated that if the radius of the nucleus <coughs> is around 10 to the power of minus 13 cm the radius of the atom will be around 10 to the power of minus 8 cm that means the nucleus is around 1 lakh times smaller than the atom so electron therefore took about 1 lakh times the radius of the nucleus so this is the radius this is the nucleus and the nuclear radius is around 10 to the power of minus 13 cm and rutherford assumed that the radius of the atom is around 10 to the power of minus 8 cm so rutherford's nuclear model of the atom explained the alpha particles scattering as positive alpha particle experience a relative repulsive force from the positive nucleus <coughs> so measurement of the percent of alpha particle passing through and the various angle of scattering of those coming close to the nucleus gave rutherford a means of estimating the size of nucleus so as i already told you that only 1 in 10000 alpha particle got scattered and rutherford did some mathematic measurement and he came to the conclusion that the radius of the nucleus is around 10 to the power of minus 13 cm whereas the radius of an atom is around 10 to the power of minus 8 cm that means compared to the size of the atom the nucleus is around 1 lakh times small so this is the football field this is a 1 rupee coin and if you consider the thickness of 1 rupee coin to be the thick radius of a nucleus then the size of the atom the length of the atom will be the length of the football so this is just a comparison so another comparison is that that if we consider uh, the nucleus to be the size of a cricket ball then the radius of the atom will be around 3 km that is why most of the alpha ray pass through without any difficulty and only few alpha ray strike the very very small nucleus and got deflected so this is the major achievement of rutherford's scattering experiment that rutherford scattering experiment led to the discovery of what we call the nucleus and it is the nucleus where the entire mass of the atom is concentrated and the nucleus is made up of is contain positive charge that means nucleus contain proton but mass of the proton was not sufficient to explain the heaviness of the nucleus so that time rutherford predicted that another fundamental particle must have been present in the nucleus and late in 1932 chadwick discovered neutron and rutherford prediction came true and till now we know at this date we know that the nucleus comprises of protons and neutrons and the positive charge of the nucleus is due to the presence of the positively charged protons and the nucleus becomes heavy because along with the proton the neutrons 
are also present and they're very, very, very compact. And so the density is very, very high. And based upon the Rutherford's scattering experiment, he proposed the Rutherford's nuclear model of atom. And that model states that atom comprises of a heavy positively charged body called nucleus at the center. And it is in the nucleus, the whole mass of atom is concentrated. And the electrons revolve around the nucleus. So this was the Rutherford's scattering experiment. And result, it discovered nucleus. And based upon the scattering experiment, he proposed the nuclear model of atom where the atom comprises of a nucleus and the nucleus is positively charged and the electrons revolve around the positively charged nucleus. So this way, the development or the knowledge regarding the structure of atom developed. Started with the word atomus, that atom is individual particle as postulated by Dalton. Then electron and proton were discovered by Thomson. Then Thomson proposed the plum pudding model of atom. Then Rutherford came to the skin. He carried the scattering experiment where he scattered alpha rays by a gold foil which led to the discovery of neutron. Then around 1902, Max Planck came into the picture. And Max Planck, he is the founder of Planck's quantum theory. So that is another important story. So I would like to share with you how Planck postulated the quantum theory, what was the reason behind Planck investigating black body, etc, etc. Now, I will tell you something about black body radiation. So to understand black body radiation, first of all, we have to know what is a black body. So black body is a body which absorbs all types of electromagnetic radiation incident upon it. You have heard about black hole. So black hole, it is a true or false, we do not know. But Einstein predicted the black hole theory where the gravitational force is so high, even electromagnetic radiation cannot escape. So black body, it is a body which absorbs any type of electromagnetic radiation incident upon it. And the black body when heated will emit any type of electromagnetic radiation. So all of you have seen what happens when iron is heated. When iron is heated, it becomes hot, then it turns reddish, then it turns orange, and at last, if you go on heating, it becomes white. Why? Because when you heat iron, it starts emitting visible radiation. At first red, and gradually when you heat it, heat it, heat it, at very high temperature, it starts emitting all visible radiation, and so it looks white. So a black body, it's a body, which absorbs not only visible light, any kind of electromagnetic radiation, it may be gamma ray, it may be cosmic ray, it may be ultraviolet ray, it may be infrared ray, it may be microwave ray, any time of electromagnetic radiation incident upon it will be absorbed. And a black body when heated will emit all kind of electromagnetic radiation. It means a black body is a perfect absorber as well as a perfect emitter. Then you can ask me, where can we find black body? My answer is that you cannot find black body because black body, it is an imaginary concept. It is an imaginary concept. 
so you have heard about black box so what is a black box it does not look black it is actually orange color and it is present in aeroplane and helicopter and the black box records all the data during the flight and if the aeroplane crashes or the helicopter crashes it catch fire the data stored in the black box do not get lost that means black box absorbs all the data it does not give out data so it is called a black box so here what is a black body it is a hypothetical body it is a imaginary body which absorbs all types of electromagnetic radiation incident upon it and when heated a black body will emit all type of electromagnetic radiation and either black body can be imagined as a box having an adiabatic wall having a small orifice having a small opening so if electromagnetic radiation enters through this orifice it will undergo multiple reflection and get absorbed inside the black box but this is completely hypothetical so this is the orifice the electromagnetic radiation enters and in between refraction it travels in straight line so you see it cannot go out from the body you know, from the hole and ultimately multiple reflection will occur and the and the light will get absorbed inside the black box so is it clear that black body is a hypothetical body which will absorb any kind of electromagnetic radiation incident upon it and when heated it will emit all kind of electromagnetic radiation so a black body is a perfect absorber as well it is a perfect emitter and the radiation emitted from a black body is called black body radiation so when a black body is heated it emits all kind of electromagnetic radiation and these radiations emitted from a black body is called black body radiation so this is a black body a black body is a perfect absorber of electromagnetic radiation in theory it absorbs in theory i am telling you because you will not get real black body so you can just imagine so in theory it absorbs all incident radiation a perfect absorber it also a perfect emitter of radiation and we study the emission intensity versus temperature so the radiations when you heat a black body it will start emitting radiations and these radiations emitted from a black body is called black body radiation is it clear so this structure uh, this theory part regarding atomic structure you must learn as a story you must uh, try to understand as a story because it is actually a story one story comes another story and that led to the discovery of the structure of atom so then this quantum concept that is a uh, quantum theory of radiation so in 1900 max plan introduced that matter emits and absorbs energy in discrete unit called quanta okay now who was max plan he was a physicist and he wanted to do research in physics so he went to his professor and he said that he is interested in physics and he wanted a problem which he can study and find a solution but the physics professor told max planck that now physics is a dead science all observations have been wonderfully explained all observations have got theory now there is nothing new in physics all equations have been solved and mr planck if you want to build a career in science you choose mathematics you choose chemistry but there is nothing left in physics to be discovered 
but Max Planck was not interested in chemistry. He was not interested in mathematics. He was only interested in physics. So he requested his professor, the sir, I'm not interested in chemistry. I'm not interested in mathematics. Please give me some problem in physics. And at last, his professor told him the problem of black body radiation because till date, no one was able to perfectly explain black body radiation. So Planck was given that opportunity. You try to find out some solution for the black body radiation. And some theories were given by Rayleigh Jean, but that was not adequate to explain black body radiation. And Planck was a happy man. And he went home and he studied the problem. And then he made a very bold hypothesis. He was not at all frightened. He proposed a view which was completely opposite to the ideas of physics at that time. And at the time, And at the time, so here, here there is the gentleman Max Planck, and he initiated a new branch of physics today, which we call it as a quantum physics. And he proposed a paper regarding the black body radiation. And he made some pre assumptions regarding light. And those assumptions were completely opposite to the belief of the physicist at that time. And this led Max Planck win the Nobel Prize in physics in 1980. Now I want to tell you this story of Max Planck. And during that days, light was believed to supply energy continuously. And you all know that light provides energy because if you keep water outside, in the sunshine, it becomes warm, it becomes heated up. That means sun light is absorbed by water and light is a form of energy. And so also in your school days, you must have concentrated sun rays with the help of magnifying glass and you burnt small pieces of paper. And that time physicists believe that light supplied energy continuous. Now, what is this continuous process and what is a discontinuous process? Continuous process that when you drink water, just imagine when you drink water, water continuously flows from your mouth to your stomach. <clears throat> then when you fill a bucket with water under a tap, water from the reservoir, when you open the tap, water from the reservoir, continuously flows down into the bucket. So drinking water or filling a bucket with water from a tap, water continuously flows. So people believed that like water flows from a tap to the bucket, light also pro provides energy continuously. That means light carries energy continuous. But Max Planck proposed that no, light does not carry energy continuously. Light carries energy discontinuously in the form of small energy capsule or small energy packet, which were called quanta. So already I have given you an example of continuous process like drinking water. Now let's just imagine eating candies, eating toffee. Can you eat toffee like drinking water? No. So how you eat candy? You take one candy, peel it, put it in your mouth, crush it with your teeth and you swallow it. Then again, you take one candy in your mouth, repeat the process, then another candy in your mouth, 
so you are taking candy one by one not continuously like what and max bank proposed that electromagnetic radiations like light comprises of energy packet called quanta so when light produces uh, provides energy it provides discontinuously it provides them energy in the form of small small packet called quanta so quanta can be also uh, assumed like a capsule you know how you take capsule you take it in a mouth and you swallow it and if you take two capsule you have to take the other one immediately after the first capsule so and so so planck proposed that unlike the physicist they believed that electromagnetic radiation carried energy continuously planck proposed that electromagnetic radiation carried energy discontinuously in the form of small energy packet called quanta and when it is applied to light it is called photon so energy is not emitted or absorbed continuously it is emitted or absorbed in the form of wave packet because you know electromagnetic radiation travel in wave so all electromagnetic radiation contains packets and those packets are called wave packet or quanta and in case of uh, light uh, quantum or uh, quanta is substituted by the word photon so all electromagnetic radiation it is made up of energy capsule it is made up of energy packets and these energy packets are called quanta secondly he postulated the energy of a quanta that is the energy um, carried by a quanta or energy carried by a photon is proportional to the frequency of the light so light or electromagnetic radiation there is no doubt it travels in wave and the energy of the quanta is directly proportional to the frequency of light so means high frequency high energy of the quanta so of the electromagnetic radiation the gamma ray has got the highest frequency because its wavelength is smallest so the photons carried by gamma ray has got very high energy so it is harmful to human being whereas microwave we are using in microwave tower in mobile towers you are using microwave in your mobile phone wavelength is high frequency is low so the quanta energy is very low and it cannot cause harm to our body so planck quantum theory proposed that electromagnetic radiation comprises of energy packet called quanta and the energy of quanta is proportional to frequency of light and this h it is a proportionality constant and it is called the planck's constant and the third postulate the total energy absorbed or emitted is integral multiple of quanta that means a body either it will absorb one quanta energy two quanta energy three quanta energy but it cannot absorb or emit fraction quanta of energy that means either the quanta will be absorbed as a whole or the quanta will be emitted as a whole but you cannot bite half quanta or you cannot bite three fourth quanta jet so this is the planck's quantum theory it comprises of three postulates and with the help of this three postulate you could explain black body radiation and this idea of planck through planck's quantum theory it bought, bought a revolution to physics it bought a revolution to physics so friends today i have discussed an important topics in this atomic structure part 2 lecture where i discover this uh, discussed rutherford's scattering experiment i discussed rutherford's nuclear model of atom and i discussed a very important discovery of the beginning of 20th century that is the planck's quantum theory and planck's quantum theory brought a revolution to physics and later on 
Einstein applied quantum theory, he could explain photoelectric effect. Compton could explain scattering by applying Planck's quantum theory. Then Niall Bohr, he introduced the Planck's idea of quantization of energy and he proposed the Bohr's theory. Hope you enjoyed this lecture. Myself, Vedanta Bora, Associate Professor, Department of Chemical Science, DR College, Assam, India. And if you enjoy my video, if you enjoy my lecture, please subscribe my channel so that you get timely updates. So with a promise that I will be soon back with the part three lecture of the atomic structure series. Goodbye for me.